I stumbled across this video the other day that claims to talk about the most useless university degrees. And obviously being in the space myself, I was thinking, well, this is really interesting. So for those of you who don't know, I used to work for a university. Now I know the title of the video, but it was too complicated to actually explain what I do now. Uh, basically, we run a business that helps people decide whether or not they're going to go on to higher education. So I think it'll be interesting to see what this guy has to say. Now, before we start the video and to play devil's advocate, there's really no denying the shift university degrees have taken in the last 10, 15 years. You know, back in the day, if someone was to get a university degree, it was almost a ticket to a job and it really could catapult your career and your income in a much more effective way. And on top of that, here in Australia, you were able to study at university entirely for free. So what we're seeing nowadays is not only is the commodity of a university degree become less rare, but on top of that, the prices are increasing as well. So we're sort of seeing two factors go against how valuable one might see a university degree. And just before we start the video, just keep in mind that we're talking about these degrees, assuming the student is going in wanting to get a career out of it. So I definitely do understand that there is a place for university study in accessing a passion or really exploring something that's valuable to you as a student. But with that, I'll stop rambling and let's get into the video. What's happening guys, it's Shane here. In this video, I'm gonna go over what degrees you should absolutely avoid at all costs. But before I trigger a few more people, I just wanna put a very, very quick disclaimer out there. But Shane, you should always follow your passion. Listen, if your passion in life happens to be one of the degrees that I mentioned in this video, that's totally fine. You should still follow your passion. All I'm saying is you should not go $50,000 in debt for a piece of paper that's not gonna benefit you at all. And you can still study the subjects you're passionate about. I mean, top universities in the world offer all of these classes for absolutely free. You just don't get a degree from them. This point specifically about the ability to do different university subjects entirely for free or alongside other more practical degrees is a really good point. I mean, for me personally, I had a career focused degree and included my passion within that as an elective. And that was a great way to supplement all of the additional study that I was doing outside of formal education as well. So reading on my own, looking at peer reviewed articles that are freely available on the internet, also provides a lot of value. So keep that in mind that you, not only can you do self-study outside of university walls for much cheaper or free, but if you really do want to get the formal university experience for an area of study that mightn't have the best return on investment when it comes to monetary gain afterwards, then including it as an elective inside of another degree is something that you can do. So number 10 on the list is going to be psychology psychology? Not what I expected. I mean, in Australia, I do understand there are a lot of people who do it. It's a very popular degree, but there is definitely a clear progression. And, you know, to be fair, it is, it is quite long, but it's kind of a necessity if you are wanting to go on to be a psychologist, whether that be at a clinical level, neuropsychological or organizational. But let's see what he has to say. The reason I decided to include this one is because it is one of the top five most popular majors, mm. even though it has really, really bad statistics in all of the important categories like job openings, job satisfaction, uh, future growth potential, all of these things that are very, very important. Okay, that's a good point. It is, I would say, the same sort of popularity here in Australia. People sort of fall into two categories, I would say here, like those who are serious about becoming a psychologist where this degree is actually a requirement. That makes sense. But then there's people who go into it not really understanding what is involved. And that's where I can understand there would be some case for people being a little extra cautious. And I find psychology to be extremely interesting. I mean, I took extra classes on it in undergrad, but I don't recommend actually majoring in it. So number nine on the list is going to be drama and theater arts. And you might be surprised that this one isn't further down on the list because it does get made fun of a lot. But the reason I put this one further up is because it is actually kind of difficult to teach somebody how to act from a book. To be honest, to be completely transparent, I personally don't have that much experience. There aren't a lot of 
institutions that do teach drama and theater arts to a high level. So yeah, I just think I don't have really have enough experience in the area to make a blanket statement. And because it's so hard to teach someone this particular skill from a book or even videos, that's why I kept it towards the top of the list. But that doesn't change the fact that it's still a pretty worthless degree that you are going to have a hard time getting a job from. So number eight on the list is going to be language studies. And I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this one because there are some languages out there that, you know, if you learn and you get really good at, you can make a lot of money as a translator. But the reason I put this on the list is because you can easily learn a language by getting a video program or an audio program or actually moving to the country where this language is spoken. I do understand where he's coming from. And again, with regards to earning an income, spending $30,000, $40,000 to get a bachelor's degree in a specific language, especially if it's a real, real niche language where there wouldn't be that many translating and interpreting opportunities, there would definitely be more efficient ways to do it. With that being said, when you are wanting to become an accredited translator or interpreter, from my understanding, there are like certain tests that you need to complete. And so sometimes when you do these languages that that sort of uh, qualification is included in the official tertiary study. But I do know that there are other ways to do it. There are people who natively speak, speak the language who can get that accreditation just by sitting an exam. And so that's a way quicker, way more efficient way. So if you can sort of bridge the learning gap by going over there, in an immersive period for a year, six months even, and get up to that level rather than studying it in a, in a country that doesn't teach the language, yeah, it mightn't be the best decision. Now, with that being said, the reason this one isn't further down on the list is because there are certain languages that are more difficult in terms of writing and speaking than others. You know, an example of this would be Mandarin or Cantonese, because that is a very useful language. It's uh, something that's going to be very useful to know in the next 50 years as business becomes more international. But at the same time, there are cheaper and probably better ways to learn the language than going to university and getting $50,000 in debt. So so number seven on the list is going to be communications and this one is actually kind of similar to psychology because it's an extremely popular major that people tend to choose but don't get this too confused because this major is clearly even worse than psychology and it's one of those majors that really makes you think like what do you even do with this major i mean yeah like a lot of areas of study there's no body that governs some sort of ongoing accreditation that says that you can do anything specific in the workplace as there would be with something like engineering, medicine, teaching is another example. But there are bodies outside of that that ensure that people know certain things. But with communications, with business, it's sort of like you're just gaining knowledge that the university has put some sort of value on and you're sort of hoping that would be attractive to some employer. And yeah, this is where the line gets really murky. Like a lot of this stuff, most of it you could probably learn on your own and not have to spend so much money to get there. It's something that's so broad that it becomes kind of useless. Like they might as well come out with like a life degree or a breathing degree or a how to smash that like button degree. Now, number six on the list is going to be photography. And this might be one of the most saturated fields on the entire list. Yeah, photography is definitely not something that you need to spend so much money on at an institution like a university, particularly one of the major public universities where they do all of the other degrees. Like maybe you could get some value from like a specific college, but then again, you know, you wanna be careful that they're not gonna charge you even more than the public unis will, you're probably better off looking for YouTube channels or short, cheaper courses that they offer that teaches you their way of photography. I can't really see any reason why you would wanna do this at a traditional university. And the big point here is there's so many resources online like Peter McKinnon, for instance, on how to become a really good photographer. And a lot of them are free or very, very cheap and you can get high quality training. And this is one of those skills where you really just have to practice in order to get better. You definitely do not need to spend five figures on this. And one of my best friends actually moved to the country barely knowing any English. He taught himself photography and he became one of the top wedding photographers in Las Vegas within just a few years. And once you get really good at a skill like this, you know, it doesn't matter what 
credentials you have next to your name. What really matters is your portfolio because that will speak for itself. Okay, so these bottom five are getting really, really hard for me to pick because they're all so damn worthless. So number five on the list is going to be fine arts. Mm. I had a feeling this one was going to be on there. It's a similar sort of thing to photography, to be honest. Like, I wouldn't say that it's necessary at all. Like, how many of the top artists around the world actually have a university degree and would vouch or would say that they needed it? I can't imagine it would be many. But, I mean, if that was your passion and you were going to university anyway for something else, you could, like I said before, include this as an individual subject. Something like that may be fine. But doing an entire degree in it, yeah. I don't know wh whether or not it would be worthwhile. And the reason this one is ranked even lower on the list than something like, you know, drama or theater is because at least in drama or theater, you know, you kind of do need to talk to a live person in order to learn it. But with fine arts, everything you need to know, you can absolutely learn just by reading books or watching videos or just hanging out and making friends with other people who are doing the same. Yes. No, that's the other thing I was going to mention. The networking is, that that's sort of, in my opinion, probably the biggest reason that this would be something to not just throw out the window, like the people with similar ideas that you're going to meet in studying this could eventually lead to something more. And that's one positive, I think, at university in general. But whether that's worth $40,000, probably not in most cases, but it is one good thing. Number four on the list is going to be anthropology slash archaeology. Again, uh, <laughs> it put me in a difficult situation because basically I've known someone to do every one of the areas of study here. So I'm interested to see what he has to say. So when I was doing research on making this video, this one actually had the worst statistics out of every single one on the list in terms of getting hired, you know, percentage of job growths and jobs are gonna open up in the next decade. I think this one was actually the number one worst on the list. And listen, with a job like archeologist, if you wanna break into this field, you're gonna have to get creative about how you do it because there's simply just not that many job openings available. And the only thing you're gonna end up rediscovering is your dignity when you have to pay all those student loans back. I can't imagine there would be very many job opportunities, if any, in the majority of cities. Basically, what you would want to be banking on is some sort of teaching role, I would imagine. But then again, doing it with the prospect of wanting to get some sort of career, get some sort of return on your money would be uh, difficult. So number three on the list is going to be art history. There's not, there's not really much else you can say, but... Yeah. And this one beats all of the other art degrees because it's not even art. It's the history of art. Like, you got to be kidding me. You can so easily just go and buy a textbook. Like, you don't even have to watch videos on this. Just go buy some textbooks online. They're very, very cheap after a few years. And, and each one of these, as I'm getting closer to number one on the list, are just getting more and more painful. Number two on the list is going to be religious studies. <sighs> Mm, this one is actually interesting. I don't know whether or not I agree with this. Now, he could cover everything I'm about to say, but if this sort of study, something like this, is a requirement, if you're wanting to become the minister or whatever it may be, then, you know, the, the fact that you're not actually going to be able to earn that much, I think you sort of know what you're getting into in a lot of cases. Like, I don't think there are many people going into religious studies thinking they're going to come out and be earning $200,000 a year. They're doing it for their love of the religion or whatever. Um, and so, you know, if this is a requirement in order to get, in order to become a minister or a preacher, whatever it may be, then I don't think that it's as bad as some of the other ones on this list. Just go read a Bible or something. There's free ones in every cheap hotel across America. Like, how do you even expect to get a job or make money unless you're one of those television preachers or something? 
And on top of that, with regards to, you know, his comment before, which I'm sure was a joke about, you know, just pick up a Bible. The Bible's an, an old book and there's a lot of really weird stuff in it. Like, I haven't read the whole thing, um, but of the parts that I have read, it is super complicated to understand and without the proper foresight and planning, reading it could point you in the wrong direction, I can imagine, in certain books and parts. But with that being said, that sort of stuff is freely available. You know, there are podcasts, there are videos, there are courses, way cheaper ways to learn about that. So if it's purely about the interest, then yes, I, I would agree that paying so much for a degree like this probably isn't the, the way to go. Um, but if there is some sort of certificate or diploma, whatever that's required, then you know it's not as bad as some of the others on the list. Now, number one on the list might not surprise you. It is so ridiculed across the internet that it has practically gained meme status. And that is of course, gender studies. And I don't think anything needs to be said here. I mean, just think about it. Where are the jobs? What kind of jobs? How can you contribute or give value to society by majoring in this? And you might be thinking, well, it's really important because politicians talk about it all the time. And that is a good point until you realize that none of those politicians actually have a degree in gender studies. <laughs> I, can't, I can't really say anything to that last one. To be honest, like, yeah, of all of them, this one's the least applicable to the marketplace. Like, you know, w whether it's something that you want to learn more about, I think you can watch all of the debates, read articles and articles for free on the internet about it, going through a formal education, paying tens of thousands of dollars for something like this is not what you want to be doing. And with that, I'll end the video here. Now, very quickly, if any of you guys are Australian and you're about to start applying for university here in Australia, then I would definitely recommend that you check out the short course that we created, Application Optimization. It's a few lessons that go through step-by-step step what you need to do to avoid missing out on any offers that you're actually eligible for and receive multiple offers for universities here in Australia. So I'll put a link to that in the description. And then if you want to check out one of our other videos, here they are and I'll see you next time.